In this video, we present the system we implemented for augmenting 2D video streams for interactive remote teaching. We start with a system overview, then discuss some demonstrative examples to showcase some of the system's capabilities. The system provides a way for instructors to incorporate augmented reality into remote education. Instructors use one or more mobile devices to teach from their physical teaching space, which can be augmented with educational content to aid their teaching. Students then use a web browser to view and interact with the live streamed augmented content, where they can see multiple views simultaneously. Now that we have a brief understanding of the system, we show a couple of demonstrative examples showing some of its capabilities. The first example is annotating a physical object in multiple views. This sample lecture demonstrates a physical 3D printer in the 3D teaching space and uses two devices to show two different viewpoints. During the lecture, the instructor adds annotations on the printer and triggers a printing animation. A student also asks a question directly in the 3D space by annotating the printer. Today we'll be talking about using a 3D printer for personal fabrication. We'll be specifically talking about the Ender 3 Pro printer. We'll talk about the different parts that make up the printer, as well as a little bit about the actual printing process. So to start off, we'll talk about the extruder and some of the related parts. So the extruder is located here, and it has a hot end underneath that melts the filament, which is pushed through this tube um, into the hot end to melt by this gear in the back. And different printers might have different ways of extruding the filament. Uh, the next part is this flat surface in the middle called the build plate. Um, this is where the filament is deposited to create the print, and this printer has a removable top surface to make the print easier to remove. Um, in order to have a successful print, the bed needs to be level, uh, and this can be controlled using the leveling knobs underneath. So you can turn these knobs to adjust the height of the print bed, and there is a leveling knob in each of the four corners of the bed to make sure the entire bed is level. And the last component I'll talk about is the control panel. And this is the interface that you can use to uh, choose what print you want to print by accessing the SD card. So here you can see the list of prints on my SD card or you can just change some settings or change some, adjust some of the parameters. So those are some of the main parts of the printer. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, so this thing over here is a limit switch for the z-axis. Um, it has an actuator that gets triggered when the extruder moves all the way to the bottom, and this prevents um, the hot end or extruder from breaking the build plate by moving too far down. Okay, so if no one has any more questions, we'll move on to actually printing an object. Um, so when you print an object, filament is deposited layer by layer onto the build plate. As you can see, printing this vase, uh, it is deposited layer by layer and the extruder simultaneously uh, melts filament and moves upwards to create the physical object. And once the print is complete, you can take it off the build plate and you have the completed 3D printed model. And see, I printed this earlier with this printer. In this lecture, we saw the instructor explaining a physical 3D object, specifically a printer in their 3D teaching space. Using a mounted overhead view in conjunction with a focused view, the instructor could maintain context while talking about a specific component. We also saw a student asking a question directly in the 3D scene, allowing the instructor to quickly notice and comprehend the question. Finally, the animation efficiently illustrated a dynamic process, specifically printing with a 3D printer. Our next example explores 3D geometry, student engagement, and object interactions. This lecture explains chemical bonding using physical and virtual models in the AR teaching space. The instructor shows 3D geometry by manipulating and transforming the presented models. The students answer a question and give feedback by directly annotating a virtual model. Finally, the instructor triggers an animation by moving two image targets close together, which helps explain ionic bonds. Today we'll be talking about chemical bonds. We'll talk about covalent bonds and ionic bonds, as well as a little bit about polarity and electronegativity. To start, let's take a look at two example molecules. 
this is methane. Methane is made up of one carbon bonded to four hydrogen in this tetrahedral shape. And next is water, or H2O, which is made up of one oxygen bonded to two hydrogen in this bent shape. Let's take a closer look at methane. Methane is a nonpolar molecule, which means it doesn't have a net charge difference across the molecule. So as I'm rotating it, you can see it is a symmetric molecule. And even though the bonds are polar, because carbon and hydrogen have different levels of electronegativity or affinity for electrons, the symmetric nature cancels out the dipoles of each bond, resulting in a nonpolar molecule. Water, on the other hand, is a polar molecule. It is made up of an oxygen, which is more electronegative, and the hydrogens, which are less electronegative, in an asymmetric fashion. Uh, based on this, which side do you guys think is more negatively charged? I'll scale this up and you guys can just click where you think uh, is more negatively charged. Yes, that's correct. Because the oxygen is more electronegative, there is a higher concentration of electrons. Um, it also has two lone pairs, which, or unbonded electrons, which make that side even more negatively charged. Let's take a look at a more complex molecule, specifically ethanol, or C2H5OH. Uh, on the right side, it's made up of carbons and hydrogen, similar in shape to the methane we looked at earlier. It's kind of like a tetrahedral shape that's kind of symmetric and kind of signals nonpolarity. But on the left side, it's made up of a hydroxyl group, or oxygen and hydrogen which is polar, rendering the entire molecule polar in nature. Finally, we'll take a look at ionic bonds. Ionic bonds occur when the two atoms in a bond are so electronegatively different that one permanently takes an electron from the other. So in our case, we're looking at NaCl or table salt. Chlorine is much more electronegative than sodium, so it permanently takes an electron from sodium, uh, resulting in a positive sodium ion and a negatively charged chloride ion, which are held together by electrostatic force. In this lecture, we saw the instructor using a combination of physical and virtual models to demonstrate chemical bonding. The presentation of these models in 3D space helped to provide a more complete understanding of the molecule's geometry. The students also interacted directly with the virtual objects to answer a question, which gave quick feedback for the instructor. We also saw an animation between two atoms showing inter-object interactions, which may be difficult to show with physical props. Those were two example lectures showing some of our system's capabilities. Thank you for watching.